Right, welcome back to the Average Golfers channel and what is the start of a brand new series that we're calling Testing the Tip. So like you, I'm an average golfer and my good golf lasts maybe two or three rounds and all things go downhill and we return to our, uh, well, our faults, our bad game. And what do I do? Well, maybe like you, I look to YouTube channels to try and help me find a quick fix, solve my problems. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in testing the tips. I'm gonna try some of the tips from the major YouTube channels that are out there test their theory, see if they work, and whether or not you should also be giving them a try. We're gonna kick things off with a video that's really relevant to my current struggles, and that was of recent weeks I've been playing pretty poorly, and in particular my irons, which is generally the better part of my game, have been a little bit erratic to say the least. Strike was poor, and even with the good shots, I was getting them just a little bit thin at times off the bottom grooves, and I was questioning what was going wrong. And I watched a video from Ali Taylor, now, first of all, Ali's got a fantastic channel going right now. There's some amazing tips on there and plenty of them. So don't forget to give him uh, a subscribe and flick over to his channel for plenty and more of these kind of golfing tips. But this resonated with me. It was a recent upload of his and it was about how to strike your irons better. And I thought, right, I'll have a quick watch. And straight away, I seen things in there which were relevant to my game. And now this sort of two pence piece can make such a massive difference to my strike quality. Right, so first of all, let me try and explain the basic principle of this tip. And it's the idea is to find out where you're striking the ball or where the lowest point is in your swing. So let's take it for a sort of elite players. You will always see they'll hit ball first, then turf, and often a fairly uh, hefty divot. For me, I very much take the ball off the top of the turf. And what I found this morning is that sometimes that can be that I'm, uh, if you've ever fatted a ball or you catch it just a little bit behind, then the lowest point in my swing is certainly at the back of the ball. And that's something that's not ideal in terms of perfect iron striking. You wanna be striking the ball or the lowest point in your swing needs to be after impact. Now, the good thing that we've got is we've got Trackman to tell us, is this instructional video that we're gonna use, this tip, is it really, has it really worked? So can we move the lowest point in my swing from being behind the golf ball potentially to being after impact? And that's what we're gonna test. And we're gonna do it with this two pence piece, which I've now lost. And the basic way in this, which this works is you place the two pence piece behind the golf ball. And it's about, I don't know, three, four inches behind the golf ball in its first instance. And the idea is, is that on your downswing, all you have to do is miss that two pence piece. Now, that may sound very easy and straightforward, but trust me, it feels very, very different when you're over the ball and you realize quite where you actually deliver that club at its lowest point. And that was the real surprise to me in this data that I collected earlier. So the shots that you see me hit uh, with dry ball data collected is Trackman very cleverly records the lowest point of your swing and it measures it in inches. And if you go through the dates that you're looking at now, you'll see that on every occasion, I'm significantly behind the ball in terms of my lowest point of my swing. And what that's done, it's impacted on basically at what part of the swing I've made uh, contact and it's made a massive difference to the way I launch the ball. I've always been a person that hits the ball incredibly high. That is that 20 degree of launch angle. You can see that on average 3.3 inches behind the ball is my lowest point of impact. And basically what that does, like I said, it's throwing that ball up there. It's a big high ball flight, can be good at times, but it very much seems hitting it on almost the upswing. And at no point am I making the lowest point of my swing after impact. So we made the drill and I tried, like I said, the two pence goes directly behind the ball. The first instance, there's quite a lot of room. And all you have to do is what it makes you do first and foremost is you start to feel that your weight slightly shifts over to that left-hand side uh, unknowingly. And I noticed it straight away. My immediate address was almost, or natural address rather, was almost 
my weight on my right heel. So almost again, where I'm on the upswing coming through. So the first thing I did was my weight automatically shifted a little bit forward. And then I attempted to try and not hit the two pence piece. And you'll see there, I just caught it. And that happens on a number of occasions when you, and don't forget, this is like four inches behind the ball at this point. But I did that on a number of occasions. Even though I was trying my best to avoid it, it just showed again that my lowest point, if you like, of, uh, of impact, or the lowest point of my swing, is quite a bit behind the ball. I'll give it one more go while the camera's on and see if we can avoid it this time. Now the big thing that changes is you hear the crispness of the strike. That's the first thing that changes. Now the idea of the video is quite simple. Find out whether or not this instructional video that comes from Ali Taylor is, not whether it's good or bad, but did I find it beneficial for me? And what I've got to say is that it made an immediate difference to the way I was striking the golf ball. Can you hear how crisp that is? It's an incredible change very, very quickly. And I'll show you in terms of dry ball data, what impact it had. That's the one, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, crisp, isn't it? Yeah. Can't believe how crisp they are, can you? Yeah. So the idea of the drill was to continually move in the two pence just a little bit closer each time to the ball and believe me it was for me personally it was a real struggle to get it any closer because I uh, as you've seen I struck it a few occasions when it was four inches behind the ball but the idea like I said just to improve that strike and I found that towards the latter part it changed significantly once I get used to it and like I said you heard the sound and the crispness of the strike change significantly. But what I like more than anything, and I know not everybody can do this, and that's why, hence the reason testing the tips video series has come about, is we've got TrackMan to back it up. Did it actually work? And it worked incredibly well. So the shots I hit this morning uh, was just a general to find out, you know, where do I strike the ball? Where is the lowest point in my swing? And the data you'll see there is 3.3 inches before the ball, on average, is the lowest point of my swing. Uh, there was as far back as 5.81 swing there behind the ball. But don't forget, that's not necessarily, that's not hitting the ground. That's the lowest point of my swing and therefore just hitting it a little bit on the upswing. You'll see that, I just want to reference when we go to the other end when I change it up. Look at things like the spin number, the carry distance and the launch angle because everything changes with this drill. So we moved the drill, we put the, uh, the two pence piece behind the ball four inches away and I started striking the ball. And with absolutely immediate effect, we started to see my lowest point of swing moving. It moved on average, so the average was 1.2 inches after impact. That was the lowest point of my swing, which was an incredible change. I just want to go to, if I get to the top of the screen, yeah, I thought so. The last three shots I hit this morning were 2.8, 3.3 and 2.9 inches after impact. So that was again, that was taking divots. That's moving significantly in some instances, almost five, six inches movement uh, into the lowest point of my swing. And it just made such a difference to the Christmas of strike. But most of all, what it changed was ball flight. I've been guilty of having sometimes a little bit of a floaty, weaker ball flight, very high launching, which in certain circumstances can be a real help, but in also in, it also can be detrimental in any lessons I've been to everybody's always talked about me getting my hands over the ball trying to get that club head covered and impact and again having this kind of uh, knock-on effect and launch angle drop to an average of 15.7 which is incredible and it's almost five degrees lower in ball flight spin drop just a little bit but not significantly you'll see the peak height drops 20 feet on average it impacts on land angle and there's some potential negatives that you'd see in there in terms of a seven iron coming into the green maybe i don't know but the whole purpose of the testing the tips is to find out whether or not that tip from ali taylor that putting that coin behind the ball 
had any sort of positive impact and did it do what it intended to do? And 100% yes, it did. Not only from an opinion based, but from a factual based in terms of what we got from Trackman. So fantastic tip from Ali. Don't forget, if you want more tips on a regular basis, then go and check out Ali's Taylor, Ali Taylor's channel. Fantastic uh, content what he's putting out right now. And I can 100% guarantee that that tip he's just put out works fantastically well. It did for me, it made a massive difference. And just the crispness, crispness of strike alone was worth doing it. It's something that I will continue to do. The challenge is going out on the golf course without that two pence and visualizing that it's there and trying to do exactly the same thing. Right, that's me. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe if you don't already, hit that like button, but comments down below. Give the tip a go and give me your feedback or is this something you've seen already and maybe perhaps tried yourself? But more importantly, this is the first episode of this Testing the Tips series. And what I want to know is what are your thoughts on it and whether we should continue to do more. Right, thank you for watching. See you soon.